The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning session with Lopez Evelyn, your logic teacher. Dear learners, we are going to continue with our Form 5 Logic. Form 5 Logic Lesson 31. This lesson is titled, Testing the Validity of Syllogisms Using the Venn Diagram Technique. This is the second part of it. During the first part, we saw how to test the validity of syllogism using validity. Testing validity of syllogism, the case of valid argument. This time around, we are going to testing the validity of argument using the Venn diagram technique, the case of invalidity. Before we go into our lesson proper, take out your assignment. The assignment that was given to you in your previous lesson. Produce a Venn diagram. You are required to produce a Venn diagram for the following categorical syllogism. Produce a Venn diagram for the following categorical syllogism. That is, all students are learners. Some students are teachers, therefore, some teachers are learners. You are required to produce a categorical syllogism and bring out the mode and the figure. Look at it. I hope you had it correct. This is the two circles for this circle and this stands for all students are learners. This circle and this circle. All who are students are learners. That is why it is shaded. Now you have some students are teachers. Yeah, we are talking about these two circles. This and this. And so we mark an X to say that some students are teachers. Now the conclusion is Therefore, some teachers are learners. You discover that this is an A proposition. This one also is an A proposition. And the conclusion is an A proposition. And so, this one is an A proposition. We have here an I proposition. And here equally an I proposition. Therefore, our, our argument is, the mode of our argument is A, I, I, and it is the third figure, figure three. Correction of assignment, take note, A, I, I, three, because of the position of the middle term. When we are talking about the third figure, it simply means that the middle term is the subject of the major premise and the subject of the minor premise. Before we go into our lesson, this is our program. This is our lesson plan. We are going to start with the lesson overview. We continue with the lesson justification. And we go to previous knowledge, that is prerequisites. Then after, we shall come out with a real-life situation 
to help you to better assimilate your lesson. Uh, then after, we are going to bring out a learning activity. Then we'll continue with an integration activity. Before you go home, you shall have an assignment to bring in next class so that it will help you understand our next lesson. Lesson overview. Why this lesson? We are going to identify the method of testing the validity of a categorical syllogism. And equally, we are going to see that the general rules of the validity of an argument are revisited. Testing the methods of testing the validity of categorical syllogism as well as the general rules, including the fallacies of categorical syllogism. Why this lesson? Why do we go about testing validity of argument using the Venn diagram technique? Simply because it shall instill in you, the learner, the skills on how to construct valid argument. Anywhere you go, in any subject, in your environment, in your society, you should be able to construct valid argument. From our previous knowledge, you as a learner, you can identify and state the logical relationship between propositional statement in inference as well as test the validity of an argument using the general rules as well as the Venn diagram technique. My dear learners, look at this real life situation. Let's look at it together. What can we see? We are seeing there three persons, three students, or three children. It's a real life situation. Look at their names. We have Eban, we have Ngum, we have Ambe. What can you deduce? What have you noticed? What have you noticed? We have noticed that they are related. And that Eban is Ambe's brother. Because they are related, because of their names. Eban, Gum, and Ambe are related. And that Eban, Gum, and Ambe are siblings. Because they are related, they are siblings. It simply means that we are trying to look at an image in front of us and we have read out something from it we have noticed something from it we have noticed that they have almost the same height they are related they are equally siblings now this is our lesson lesson 31 testing the validity of arguments using the venn diagram technique that is the second part of this topic. Yeah, during the first topic, like I told you at the beginning, we saw the testing of validity of argument using the Venn diagram technique, the case of a valid argument. This time around, we are going to testing the validity of an argument using the Venn diagram technique the case of an invalid argument. Remember that this is a form four, a form five lesson. In order to be able to test these arguments correctly, every argument contains three propositions. And those propositions are propositions carefully selected by Aristotle. And he used the vowels A, E, I, and O. Each of these arguments has to contain any of these three, any of these three propositions. The A proposition is the universal affirmative proposition. And it is, refer it, it is for example, have O, S, R, P. 
it is expressed in the form RSRP, e.g., all teachers are intelligent persons. We equally have the universal negative, represented by the E, and it is expressed no SRP, e.g., no cats are reptiles. Now we have the particular affirmative proposition represented by the I and expressed as some SRP. For example, we have some students are learners, some teachers are wise persons. Now we have the particular negative proposition symbolized with O and it is expressed as some S are not P. Some who are are not P. Now, for example, I said earlier that every argument must contain any three of those four propositions. Look at this example. All animals are creatures. All monkeys are animals. Therefore, all monkeys are creatures. We want to test the validity of such an argument. Now, to test the validity of an argument, what do we do? Testing the validity of an argument, that is, a categorical syllogism, like the one we saw. Look at it. All animals are creatures. All monkeys are animals. Therefore, all monkeys are creatures. This is an example of a categorical syllogism. In order to test the validity using the Venn diagram technique, what are the various procedures to follow? The first procedure is that there are three ways of testing validity of that argument. Three ways. One of it is the general rule. There are seven general rules of testing validity of arguments. Another one is the figure and mode method, and now the Venn diagram technique. What do you understand by the Venn diagram? What for you is a Venn diagram? It is a type of argument invented by the English logician called John Venn in 1881 for representing and assessing the validity of a syllogism. He used it to represent and assess validity of syllogism. What are these syllogisms used for? They are used in testing the validity or invalidity of syllogistic argument. We use the Venn diagram to see whether an argument is valid or invalid in the course of discussion with your friends, around, in your job site, and anywhere you go. They are equally used to determine whether the squares of propositions are equivalent. What you are saying in A and what you are saying in B, are they equivalent that you can draw the conclusion that a and B are the same. Are they equivalent? Those are some of the uses of the Venn diagram technique. Equally, they are used to determine the compatibility of elements. Are they alike? The Venn diagram, take note, consists of three overlapping circles. Look at it. Three overlapping circles, which means that the three circles climb on one another. They overlap. Three overlapping circles. Which two of them, into which two premises are represented and the conclusion only interpreted from the diagram. On this diagram, we have three circles. Each of the circles denotes the major premise. This is the major premise here. The major premise. 
Look at it very well. And here you have the minor premise. For these two circles here will be the circles for the major premise. These two circles will be the circles for the minor premise. And this one will be the middle term. If you want to look at it very well, you are going to see that this circle and this are the two circles for the conclusion. The first two are diagram in such a way that they intersect the three or the third circle beneath, overlapping both minor and major. Look at it again, you see it clearly that these two circles overlap, the three overlap. Here is S, P, M. Where S stands for the minor term, P stands for the major term. Never you confuse. This is the major term here. And M stands for the middle term. Draw. The first thing to do is to draw three overlapping circles. I want to test the validity of an argument using the Venn diagram technique. Rule number one, draw three overlapping circles. I've demonstrated to you how those three circles are drawn. These are them here. Here we have S, P, and M. Remember that this P here is a major, is a major term. And this is a minor term. This circle stands for the minor term. This circle stands for the major term. And this one stands for the middle term. S, P, and M respectively draw three circles and label the circle as S, P, R, M. As you can see, S is a minor term. P is a major term and M is a middle term. These letters represent terms. Always use terms. Don't use, even if you have written here major, minor term, major term, and middle term, you have to transfer the terms that are found on the argument on these circles. For example, we have to diagram an example of a categorical syllogism. In order to diagram a categorical syllogism, you must remember that all A propositions are diagrammed by shading the zone that belongs to S only. The E proposition is diagrammed by shading the zone that belongs to S and P, where they intersect. When you are talking about the I proposition, you mark an X on the zone that belongs to both S and P. And when you are talking about the O proposition, you equally mark an X here. This is the area that belongs to S only and never in P. This is a reminder, please. Enter the information on both circles. Begin with the universal if the major is particular, as the case may be, depending on how it may be. Now, enter the test. Now, my dear learners, you can enter the rest of the information by placing either an X or shading, depending on the argument that is in front of you, depending on the proposition found on that argument. Remember that in each case, if you'll be using only two circles and you ignore the third one, that is, I have three circles as such. Look at it very well. I have three circles. If I want to diagram the major premise, I'll consider only these two circles. If I want to diagram the minor premise, I'll consider only these two circles. And if I want to read the conclusion to know whether it has appeared there automatically, I'll consider these two circles. So these are the two circles for the major premise. Major. Why is I write again?
These are the two circles for the major. If you miss the circles, you have it wrong. These two circles is for the major. These two circles for the minor. Minor premise. And these are the two circles for the conclusion. That is how it is being read. When is a Venn diagram set to be valid? If a Venn diagram is valid, if and only if, after transferring the content of the major premise and the minor premise on the three overlapping circles, the conclusion automatically appears. You never diagram the conclusion. But when you see the conclusion there appearing, it means that the major premise and the minor premise has given rise to the conclusion. The conclusion is implied in the major and minor premise. For instance, look at this invalid syllogism. An argument is said to be invalid on the Venn diagram when the conclusion is not totally represented. Look at this diagram. All siblings are related. All siblings are family members. Therefore, all family members are related. All siblings are family members. All who are siblings are family members. That's why we shade here. Remember, I told you these are the two circles. Now, you have all siblings are family members. All siblings are related. Come back. All siblings are related. These are these these are the this is these are the two circles. For all siblings are related. Now you have all siblings are family members. You are going to have it like this for these two circles. Look at it. That is why some of it will cross on the other. Now you are going to bring out the moat. This is an A proposition. This one an A proposition, and this one is an A proposition. So the mode here is A, A, A. And it is figure three. Figure three, because of the position of the middle term, which occupies that of the subject of the major premise and subject of the minor pre premise. Now, we need to test the validity of an invalid argument. That is, when the conclusion is not totally read from that argument. Let us look at it. Is this conclusion read? All family members are related. To say all family members are related means that consider these two circles for the A proposition. If here we have family members, family members, and here we have related. This is the conclusion. It simply means that we are supposed to have shaded here. This conclusion as it is, is supposed to appear here. Family members related. You ask yourself the question, is this portion of it shaded already? Has the conclusion automatically appeared after representing the major premise and the minor premise? We can see all together that this conclusion did not automatically appear. Therefore, our argument is invalid. It means that what you were saying, the conclusion is not implied in all what you said above. Tem tem amote tem zabike mane tem bien inya ne injo bien. Lesson integration activity. That is example of an MCQ. What do the circles on the Venn diagram of a categorical proposition represent? We have A, the terms of the syllogism. We have B, the premises of the syllogism. We have C, the propositions of the syllogism, as well as D, the parts of the syllogism. Who has got the right answer? 
A, the circles represent the terms of the syllogism. Now we have another question. On the Venn diagram of a categorical syllogism, the minor premise is represented by connecting the circles. Which of the circles? We know that these are the circles here. Look at it again. These are them here. S, P, M. Which two circles stands for the minor premise? Is it P and M? Is it S and P? S, M, O, S, O, M. Which are the two circles? The right answer you can see is S, M. These are the two circles for the minor premise. Which of the following statement is incorrect about the Venn diagram? Which of this statement is not correct? In a categorical syllogism, A, we draw the conclusion after drawing the premises. Do you start with the conclusion after drawing the premises? B, we draw the premises and only infer the conclusion. C, we always draw a universal premise before the particular premise. D, whenever an asterisk is placed on a line, it is an indication that the syllogism is invalid. Which of it is not correct about syllogistic argument? Let's see it together. The first answer, we draw the conclusion after drawing the premises. No, you don't draw the conclusion because the conclusion is supposed to appear automatically. All of the following statements about the Venn diagramming are false except one. In representing the premises, we can start with any, in any order. All are wrong except one. In drawing the premises, the major must always be drawn before the minor. The conclusion must always be drawn after the premises. And D, universal premises must always be drawn before particular premises. I hope you have got the answer correct. Which of the following statements about Venn diagramming is false? Universal premises must always be drawn before particular premises. On the Venn diagram of a categorical syllogism, the conclusion involves the circles, the diagram again, got it? The conclusion involves the circles S, P, M. What does the conclusion involve? S and M, P and M, S and P, O, S, P, M. The conclusion will obviously represent S and P, these two circles. Problem solving activity. You cannot go home without answering these questions. Represent the following categorical syllogism on a Venn diagram and then determine the mode and figure. All teachers are wise persons. Some philosophers are not teachers. Therefore, some philosophers are not wise persons. Let's represent it together. We draw our three overlapping circles. We bring out S, P, M. The middle term here is teachers. The major term is wise men. And the minor term is philosophers. All teachers are wise persons. All who are teachers are wise persons. Make sure you feel it completely. All teachers are wise persons. Some philosophers are not teachers. Philosophers, teachers. This is the zone where you are supposed to mark the X. Sorry. Some philosophers are wise and not teachers. When you say some philosophers are not teachers, it means that the X is supposed to appear here. For it is an O proposition. And the conclusion is supposed to be read automatically. 
Therefore, some philosophers are not wise persons. Does the X already appear where it's supposed to appear? Here you have these two circles in which you have philosophers here and wise persons here. The X is supposed to be here. These two circles. If we already have X here, it means that this is a valid argument. Valid syllogistic argument. And the mode is A proposition, O proposition, and O proposition. And the figure is teacher one. That is it there. Figure. This is an, another example. All sweet things are fruit. Some sweet things are oranges. Therefore, some oranges are fruit. That is it there. An example of a valid argument. Summarily, my dear students, we discuss the immediate inference. We also identify the different modes of testing validity of argument. The case of uh, using the Venn diagram technique, the case of the an invalid argument. Take this assignment. Produce the Venn diagram for the following categorical syllogism and determine its modes, figure, and validity. No artists are dancers, some dancers are musicians, therefore, some musicians are artists. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our lesson was taken from Copy A All, Introduction to Logic, Dean M A All, Discovering Arguments, Can JM Passport to Ordinary Level. Our next lesson will be reading off diagram on categorical syllogism. That is, reading off Venn diagram into standard form categorical syllogism. <laughs> Mane tambia ninyane njubia yen 